If there is one thing you take away from watching or listening to today's podcast, it's exactly what the title says. And no, it is not a typo. Behind every great woman, there is a great man. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada, and this is a traveling podcast inspiring you to be just 1% more badass today than you were yesterday. In last week's episode 10, we heard from Kate, aka Captain Boomies, about how just 9.5% of all yacht captains are female. And she and I have a lot of similarities, one of them being creating content in very male dominated spaces. I love flying drones and I do a ton in the drone space and only 7.2% of all drone pilots are female. This is a funny story. In an old life, I used to be the business manager for tires for Walmart. I used to get on the corporate jet from walmart.com in San Francisco and head over to Bentonville, Arkansas, where I would, in my skirt suit, meet up with the head honchos of Michelin, Goodyear tires, and more. And I think I was the only female and the only Asian in quite a radius. What's interesting to me reflecting back on this time and that time is that the difference between Kate and I, she's really used being a female to her advantage advantage to be able to further herself in her career. For me, it's something I really struggle with. It's exhausting to constantly have my male counterparts telling me to sit down, telling me that girls don't have a seat at the table. But she and I both have something in common, which is we both have partners that really lift us up and support us in what we do, including being content creators. And so filmed in St. Pete, Florida at 2.36 a.m. in the morning after a lot of drinking, somebody who does not like being on camera or being filmed. I can't wait to introduce you to Christian because behind every great woman, there is a great man. If you were to pretend that you were Kate or Captain Boomies right now, describing you, what would you say? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I can only tell you what I hope she'd say, which is like, you know, fantastic lover, uh, great with money, gorgeous uh and you know i can depend on him but i don't know what i would really say i'd probably say he's a ugly skinny fuck with a bad attitude <laughs> this is a great great description i met her in baltimore she was teaching sailing and i was the mate on a boat and she didn't think i spoke english because i had a thick southern accent at the time not like now and uh all the Guatemalan dockhands didn't think I spoke English because they couldn't understand a word I was saying. So she would say, who's that guy? And they'd go, no, 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 he's French. Don't worry about that. <laughs> when she found out I did speak English, she goes, you speak English? I said, that's all I speak. <laughs> it's the only one I got. <laughs> I don't know who you've been talking to. Actually, did you feel like Kate was at your level, below your level, or above your level at that time? Worthy opponent. Um, our very first interaction together wound up with her dumping a drink on my head. Mm. Was it a top shelf drink? No, no. And I don't know if that would have made it better, honestly. I think I'd have been more upset if you'd have wasted that kind of money. How do you feel now, at your level, below your level, above your level, in boating? In boating? Mm-hmm. Um, well, above me, certainly, in navigation and boat handling. But I think I outclasser and fixing things is it a partnership in what happens with boating or is it something else well between us um it's most certainly a partnership for other people i couldn't begin to imagine everybody's involvement with each other in their own boat is their own thing does that benefit you more or does that benefit her more i don't know i think uh we have a we have a lovely symbiotic situation where I like when she's happy, and obviously she's happy when she's happy, so it kind of works for both of us. Hmm. Their partnership in boating was fascinating to watch, especially at the boat show where they were just dropping knowledge bombs 
everywhere and seemingly kind of just dominating the show. It was so fun to watch. But there's a second part of Christian's story that I really want you to hear. And it's really around the simplicity of how he just jumped into getting into boats in the first place. And I can relate to this story because oftentimes in life, we really overthink things and we try to rationalize everything. It doesn't make sense. And why can't very big life decisions just be simple? In my experience, I, I had a time in my life in which I was so happy living in San Francisco. I lived with my best friend. I had tons of friends in the city. I had my career established. I had a lot of things that made me very happy there. But I also knew I really wanted to live in New York City. And a part of me told me if I didn't do it now, even though I was so happy with where I was at, I might never do it. And so I slept on it for a night and the next day I woke up and started giving notice. And what I mean by that is I told my landlord, notice, I told my job, notice, and I decided to just travel the world for months and I showed up in New York City with three boxes and my racing bicycle. I had no job, I had no friends, and I had no apartment and I had a lot of trust in myself to figure it out. And it's interesting because you know what? It was a great ride. And it's fascinating to hear Christian's story about the simplicity of how he jumped into boats. Let's hear that one. Two duffel bags. Uh -huh. Where did that start? Uh, because I had to leave Shreveport, Louisiana, which is a sh hole. And, uh, and this is where you grew up? Yeah, that's where I grew up, Shreveport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a... It's a garbage pile. It's a backwater, uh, river trash place, and I love it. Um, but uh, I had to get out of town, and I heard you could make uh, $100 a day cash money washing boats in Florida. And uh, so I packed everything I had in two duffel bags, sold everything else, and moved to Florida and worked on boats. Actually, as you took this jump and started washing boats for $100 a day, mm -hmm. was it what you expected? Yeah, I was washing boats for $100 a day. I was like, it was pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. I'd show up, I'd wash a boat, they'd give me $100 cash, and I'd go spend it on liquor and food. More important question, were you happy at this time? Oh, yeah, ecstatic. A lot of smiles and high fives. <laughs> I love time. that. Actually, yeah. can, you, can you answer this question? Why were you happy during that time? I don't know, because I was less a person and more of a creature. I mean, 19 years old, you've got money, and you can go drink and carry on why not what else would you want in life yeah yeah you're not even really a person at that point you're just kind of an animal what's the most scared you've ever felt on a boat before a good story is i was on a boat it was a, a sailing boat she's a 156 foot uh traditionally rigged schooner and we were out sailing with every piece of cloth we had hanging out there's no wind and a microburst micro burst storm showed up which is a shitload of wind in a hurry dumping down on you. And it uh, threw us down on our side. And at this point, I was on my off watch. So I was below decks, so I was asleep in my bunk. And I woke up to the sounds of shouting and screaming and howling winds, and I was face down on the wall of my bunk. So I had to push myself up, stand on the wall, and look up to the door that opens out into the salon. Mm -hmm. All while all this screaming and shouting and wind and water is going on. And I throw the door open and it slams back down because I'm opening it directly straight up. And I knew that I couldn't get out. So I was going to have to wait till the boat sank and swim out. So I grabbed my immersion suit wow. and held it and started breathing. Hold on. What is an immersion suit? Uh, it's a survival suit. It keeps the heat in and makes you float. But you don't want to put it on before you're out of the boat because then you might not be able to swim down and get out. Mm, so you put okay. it on when you're outside of the boat. Okay. So I grabbed the suit and I held on to it and started doing breathing exercises, trying to hold my breath as long as I could. And uh, while I was doing that, everybody on deck corrected the problem. The boat righted itself. Mm. And then I ran up on deck to help. But uh, that was the time that I was most scared. And I thought I was probably going to have to, you know, get in a life raft, which is like, terrible from mm -hmm. washing boats to what you do in engineering boats now because over the last few days i have watched you fix and problem solve for other boat owners what was the primary way in which you became educated and how to do these things on boats 
Uh, learn by doing. It was all school of hard knocks. Uh, I watched professionals. If there was anybody I found that knew more than me, which at the beginning and middle and even to this day is a lot of people, uh, I watched them intently, ask a bunch of questions and uh, learn. And then a lot of, uh, you know, off time and private study just because it interests me. I happen to really enjoy what I do, so I get to be lucky in that. That's amazing. When it comes to boats, are you a badass? Of course. Why? Because I can fix anything. That's what I thought. When it comes to your relationship with Captain Boomies, not Kate, mm -hmm. are you a badass? No. Why? <laughs> because she's in charge. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> The amount of joy I feel in my heart. You're talking about Captain Boomies, not Kate. So overwhelming. Yeah, for Captain Boomies, I'm just I'm along for the ride. And with Kate? Well, with Kate, we're partners. But with Captain Boomies, I'm a parrot on the shoulder. That is exactly what I expected. Which, by the way, if you're watching this episode or listening to it, make sure you watch the other one. Just check the show notes. Where can someone find you? They can't. <laughs> yes! Thank you. All right. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording.